Hey animators, we did something really exciting for the month of May. We kicked off a monthly animation challenge in the Rusty Animator Facebook group. So today I'm going to show you those animations that everybody did and then I'm going to critique one of them at random and share those with everyone. Let's check them out. All right, I'm going to take a look at Brandon's Hulk animation here, the zombie Hulk. I think it's, you know, a really fun idea to have a zombie Hulk. It makes it more interesting than just a regular zombie, adds an extra layer to it. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of things that are, that are working well here for you. Um, there's some comedy in the fact that the Hulk is woken up by an alarm clock and kind of smashes everything to bits as, as he's becoming alive out of the grave. Um, and I think overall, like you've got some weight here. There's some power in the smash. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some great overlap that's in there, but with the spine and the hips and stuff, I think that's working pretty well. Um, what stands out to me, there's a lot of like little things that I think we can do to improve the mechanics. And uh, I'll talk about those first and then, uh, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of the entertainment of the shot. Um, so the big thing that stands out to me, uh, overall with the shot, the first really thing that caught my eye was twinning. So every time that he's rolling back or preparing to smash or coming down for the smash, his arms are constantly going together, you know, and he's, he's like pushing off the ground right here to stand up. They both come up off the ground and they roll back here, hit at the gravestone and the lantern all at the same time. So they feel very identical. And you do like break them up by like a frame here, like before the contact. Um, but I think, you know, whenever you wanna have an action where it's like a Hulk or you wanna do a smash with both hands, uh, something that's very gorilla like um, you want to offset it just more keep what you have but offset it more so it's not just a couple frames you want to have like this just getting there with a, like earlier one arm really leads and the other arm follows so you like four frames this gets here then this gets here and then maybe he starts to come down as you know he starts to come down and this arm starts to drop for the slam as this one's still dragging behind a little bit more uh, and you can differentiate um, them that way just by having that that more exaggerated lead and follow, which will make it feel a lot more organic for you. Um, what else will really help you is playing with the pose itself. There's a lot of times in here where the head is, like we can't really see the character's face and that's what we wanna focus on. Um, so like when we see this, this is, this is great. Uh, when he goes back here, why not keep his body rotated towards camera, you know, so we can see that face more often for every opportunity where it makes sense. Try to, try to have, to have the audience still seeing the character's face. So we can really, um, we can really do that here just by tilting the chest the opposite way something along those lines. You can keep the hips kind of countered the other way. It doesn't have to be this extreme, but you can get, you know, maybe it's even more subtle than that. I don't know, it's just, you know, 
you're, you're twisting and then you're twisting all the way up into the head so that by the time you get up here, it's really turned towards us, right? So you can have that. Um, you can have that kind of line of action opened up towards us more and, and uh, it kills two birds with one stone. So it ends up giving you more stretch in the pose this way and more squash here, depending on how intense that curl is there. Okay. And I think just, be, just because you're gonna go up here into this like slam anticipation, I probably would do that more here because this is like the big money pose, right? I was like, he's preparing to slam down and you can get this arm up and this arm up. And you can just feel how that creates that stretch here and more squash on this side. And it makes those arms feel less twinned in the pose even because, because there is that squash and stretch on each side of the character. Okay. Um, and so we're going to break up, you know, if you broke up how, how fast one arm came down and then the other, um, it works well to have these, this kind of twist in the pose because it shows you what arm is favored to really arrive first. So when you come down here, we can do the same thing here and we can make this, give this pose a little bit more flavor by tilting that upper back, that chest, and maybe uh, bringing the face a little towards more towards camera. Okay, you could even lift the head a little bit, rotate it up uh, if you wanted to. And you could oppose with the hips in the back and you get this, you still get this curl, but now you're going from one extreme to the other and you're getting more of a twist as he comes down, which makes it more interesting. And then you're creating that squash on this side now where there used to be a stretch, okay? So those two flow better together. And that means that you could stretch this arm out even further to make the pose feel more dynamic, okay? So that will really help your animation to feel um, super organic. The other thing you can do is you have you have a great spacing gap on this arm, which gives it good impact. You know, that spacing gap makes it feel strong, but this one is weakened because it's cushioning just before it hits, like the spacing gets really tiny, right? So keep that spacing big for the other arm as well and just keep it delayed. Like it's really dragging back, you know, and that going to this extreme will help you do that with that, that uh, chest will tilt. Um, what really is hurting this too and releasing the tension is it's like you got some straight keys here, those fingers unraveling and he's just kind of like floating back out into a relaxed pose of those hands. Keep that stuff tight, keep it tightened down and maybe, maybe it's even tightening a little more as he's staying grounded and maybe it's rotating in a little bit and his, his hips are dropping down and maybe he's curling just a little bit more. And we really just need pixels moving at this point. But what we don't want to do is what you did here where you release the tension, right? It feels like it kind of gets a little drifty going up. I don't really feel the body sag down more as he's as his hips start to rise and we feel that tension release from the fingers. This is the stuff that, you know, pros pay attention to and they get, you know, picked apart on by their supervisors while they're working on movies. Be like, well, that's really, you know, taking away from the power of the scene. Um you do hit a little bit of a wall here with this leg as it comes up. I would continue to squash that up and hold that as long as you can uh, with extreme spacing towards the top, right? So if this is like the highest it goes, then this spacing gets very, very close together, these frames. And then you shoot down and hit the ground with that leg where the spacing might jump from like this frame to that frame just before impact. Um, and and it, it will kill that wall, 
So that leg has somewhere to go as his arms are rising back and and that that holding that spacing tight will give you a lot of power as that leg kicks out. The other thing that you want to aim for here, that leg right now comes down to fairly even. The other thing that you want to aim for there, uh, besides having that broad spacing, is getting a stretch out of that. See, so that spacing is going to help you do it, but you really want to look for every opportunity to go from those squashes to those stretches so that we feel the power even more. So we're going to see that go to a stretch just before his weight comes down on it. Right? Like right around here, right? So you'll probably delay that foot coming down a lot more. That way it feels like it holds and then stomps out and then his body drops right after on top of it. The whole body will feel very powerful. Like it's all super connected in that, in that kind of uh, rage, you know, that he has. I like that there's the interaction of objects here too. Um, I, 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 you know, I like that this feels lighter than the gravestone. I think it was a, a perfect opportunity though to like crack the gravestone and have like the head, the head of it fall off. And, and then it would have been really obvious to you that it hit it because it doesn't move all that much and it happens very quickly. Um, so it would have been cool to have it break. And that would also be a bit symbolic because he's like the gravestone for the Hulk that he's dead and now he's back to life. So you've broken that in half. Um, it's a little, little deep for this, maybe this animation, but it gives you, gives you a little bit of that depth of the story there. Now the other main parts are really through like this opening, like stand up, pull himself out of the grave bit where I think you could use um, some improvement with the mechanics. So I like that he really punches out of the grave here. You go with a spacing like this, where there's like a really big jump and then it starts to slow down. We feel that punch and then it gets through here very soft, almost like dainty because you're taking about like double the time that you did, you went Poof, and then you went, oh, I'll put my hand down on the, on the, on the dirt of the grave, right? Um, I would have kept that intensity because I'm assuming the alarm clock is driving him crazy. Um, and, and he's kind of getting out of this grave with rage because he's the Hulk. So I would have kept it snappy just like that. So he punches out of the grave and then slams down on the ground. You know, you can hold here for a while, but you want that, that hand to slap down on the ground with some intensity because it just doesn't match his attitude right now. So all these frames where you're slowly coming down very softly, very evenly. I would just take that spacing and make it the same when he punches through. So you're holding up here at the top and then you're going to start to shoot down. And maybe you hit the ground, you know, let the spacing increase all the way to the ground. Okay. And it's really the same with the other hand. I like that one hand comes out first and then the other. Don't lose that along the way. When you pull out of the ground, it's very difficult for us to pull perfectly even where everything is like horizontal like this in our bodies and like it's very difficult for us to not favor one side or the other whenever we're doing any kind of move. So I think here you really want to favor one side. Um, maybe like this side, for instance. So your weight's a little bit more over here. The hand just came out, right? This one's already been there for a little bit. So first, you know, you're pulling here and then you're pulling this way as you're coming up. It makes it a little bit more dynamic. And I think it works to go this way because as you come out, you put all of his weight on this side, right? So it gives you a nice little um, secondary action to the movement there. Makes it more organic. And that kind of is what sets you up for a problem here because all the weight 
is on this side. We've rotated his, his massive chest and head and everything over to that arm. So that means it's very difficult for us to, in real life, if we had all of our weight on one arm, it would be very difficult to pick that arm up and not and move it forward without just face planting into the ground. So actually this arm is probably the one that should go first. It should go like this and plant and then you shift weight over to it and then move this forward, right? Or you just decide to change the weight. So you have him shift this way as he comes out of the ground. So you can go that way and plant there like you do. So either way you want to slice it there, that's how you would make that feel more natural. The other part of this that would be nice is if you kept, like I'm not a fan of, like I'm assuming that he's really gripping into the dirt here. You're penetrating through the ground and that's fine because you know, he's climbing out of the ground. I don't want you to worry about particle effects, you're an animator. Um, so I'm glad that you handled this with, this way, but to me, it's just weird to see all those fingers slowly roll out and then that hand lift. I would just keep that curl like he's gripping some dirt and then when he picks it up, his hand up, picks his hand up, and then curls his fingers out, you know, for the plant and grab. Uh, it, you know, it's it's making it feel like it can't support any weight either because this just rotates through the ground. So once once the palm of the hands come out of the ground, you really want to hold this like it's solid, like a, a foot that's on the ground. You don't want that to slip through, otherwise it feels like you can't hold any weight. So keep keep that there, rotate from this position when you pick the hand up. You can even just keep this, I think, well, you could rotate, I think you will need to rotate it from this pivot. Okay, so that will give you much more solid weight with those hands, like they're actually holding him in place, you know, supporting him. It would be nice to get more of a straight in this, so this leg, so when the hip takes off, this leg stays behind just a little bit, and then it starts to catch up with those hips, so you create a little bit of overlap in there. That would have been cool, um, but it doesn't feel too bad right now. I think those are the main body mechanics notes that will really make a big difference in, in your animation. Um, and like I said, you've already done a pretty good job with the arms and the, the spine and the head and making them not wall smack and the overlap flow. Um, this is just how you take it to a higher level. You know, something that you would do if you were working on Avengers animating the Hulk. Last, my last notes for you, I told you I was gonna talk about entertainment. I think because it's a zombie Hulk, you know, like, it's funny that he's annoyed and smashes stuff and comes out of here. I just think it's so typical of a choice to have the Hulk rear back, do this, and then slam on the ground, and that's where the shot ends. I feel like there was an opportunity here. Maybe do something different, like a different move. Maybe as he goes back, one of his arms flop off, or when he slams down on the, on the clock at the end, uh, you know, we, we see... Uh, one of his limbs get disjointed and, uh, uh, you know, he has some kind of a zombie problem, you know, or things fall out of place. Uh, it could have been entertaining, uh, more entertaining that way to end on that note where he smashes stuff, but he can't quite smash Hulk smash like he used to, you know, because his limbs are falling off. Um, to make it clear that he smashes the clock too, I think it could, would have been cool to see some pieces fly off, but that's just like extra clarity and fun to have. Like you had just had a couple, couple, couple clock pieces go in different directions. Would have been cool. Um, and I didn't quite get this move when I first watched it. Like I get that he was, you know, zombified, and he's kind of like waking from a long sleep and and slamming back. Um, I just would have liked that to be shorter so that it's kind of like he, he stumbles backwards and then goes like straight into the, the, the Hulk uh, 
smash anticipation. Because right now, when he goes into this move, it takes about as long as it takes him to go into this and then come down. And uh, to get there a little bit quicker, you could have shot those arms back faster and gotten here and held this longer so that it was a bit snappier. Um, but yeah, that's that's my note on entertainment. Is we could just have a better like like an ending gag on this that he you know he's not just the same old Hulk as usual. So I hope you really enjoyed this, Brandon. I hope it was helpful, and gave you some ideas on how to push mechanics further, and then uh, also you know how you can take your entertainment to another level with with future pantomimes and shots that you do. Um, let me know what you think, and um, I hope to see more animations from you going forward. We'll keep these monthly challenges going. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed watching those animations and the critique as well. If you participated in the challenge, really love seeing your work and seeing you, you know, take the time to, to practice your animation. If you haven't participated in the challenge this month, um, make sure you jump in for June. We're, we're just getting kicked off uh, with the amateur astronaut as the theme. So uh, if you want to participate in that, check out the details on facebook.com slash groups slash rusty animator all right i'll put that in the description below and uh, you know you can comment let me know if you have any questions or anything like that and i look forward to seeing your animations hopefully in the next few weeks and kind of covering those and maybe i'll critique yours soon until next time happy animating